from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. It's Wednesday, October 14th, and right now on Good Morning Indiana. Steady lines all of last week. Early voting continues in the Hoosier State. This morning, we're checking in with how the process is going so far. Because they're watching very closely and they, they're asking for a breakdown by age, group, or category. The number of new coronavirus cases remains high in Indiana. Why the age of new patients could predict future trends. Really important uh, to have an emergency fund. Uh, as well as tracking your spending. The pandemic is impacting finances for people across Indiana. This morning, easy steps to keep your family finances in shape. Plus, a popular website is offering you a chance to own a piece of Mars. Working for you, we're looking at if the offer is real so you don't waste your money. Good morning to you on this Wednesday, October the 14th. You are watching Good Morning Indiana here on WRTV. It is great to have you begin your midweek with us here at RTV6. WRTV, I should say. Lauren and Todd, good morning to you. It's going to be a great day. Don't forget to enjoy today because I have a feeling things are about to change. <laughs> yes, Raphael, you could say the winds are changing. And Todd, we know the winds are something we're going to see and feel out there later today. Yeah, the wind is the headline for the day today. There's no doubt about that. It's not an issue right now this morning. But as we get into the afternoon and then especially into the evening hours, that's when the wind is going to be uh, the strongest. So kind of prepare yourself for that. 49 degrees right now beautiful shot of the city from IMS the wind out of the south at six miles per hour so wind speed and wind direction are both going to play a big role in our forecast over the next 24 hours 43 in Lafayette right now 44 the common number from Peru over towards Muncie and Bloomington sitting at 45 degrees now yesterday there wasn't a cloud in the sky got up to 70 degrees put us above normal it was an absolutely beautiful day today there's going to be a little more in the way of cloud cover moving through at times we'll call it partly cloudy but we remain dry throughout the day today. Uh, the rain that you see here to our northwest, that's the cold front and that's what's going to arrive uh, during the day tomorrow. Now the wind direction today is out of the south and that is going to warm us very quickly through the 40s this morning. We jump through the 50s very quickly into the 60s by the noon hour and then temperatures all the way into the mid 70s later on this afternoon as that wind starts to pick up. Tomorrow the winds switch to the northwest. It's a drastic change in the forecast as far as temperatures go. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Tom, thank you. Let's take a look right now at traffic for your commute on this Wednesday. Here's a live look up on the northwest side of town at I-465 West 86th Street, where traffic is quiet. As you can see, no crashes to report around the metro area this morning, Raphael. So early voting, as you know, is now underway. It's been happening now for a week across our state. And WRTV's Kelsey Anderson is live this morning with the very latest. And Kelsey, you can't see me in my living room, but I'm holding up my I Voted sticker. My wife and I voted in Johnson County last week before the lunch hour, and it went easy peasy. We got it done in about 25 minutes. Awesome, Raphael. Well, I also have one of those I voted stickers that I was going to keep for these live shots and I lost it within an hour. So I don't know where that sticker went. It's somewhere in my car, but I did vote on Monday here in Hancock County and I can tell you that it took me about 40 minutes. I got in line at eight o'clock and it was kind of wrapped around the building just a little bit, but it went very smoothly. There was social distancing. There was poll workers sanitizing everything after each voter went through. It was a very fast and safe process, but lines are something that a lot of Hoosiers are still dealing with right now. But overall, county clerks are reporting it's been a successful first week. Hancock County Clerk Lisa Lisa Loft Green tells me they've had about 2% of registered Hancock County voters come out so far, and they're excited to get more polling locations up and running next week. So once we open the other four, that will help lines, I think, move a little more quickly. Um, it's good to have just the one center open for the first two weeks because then we can, you know, find out different questions that we can inform our other inspectors and judges at the other centers to expect to come up and just make sure that everything's running smoothly. So you want to make sure you have a mask and your photo ID with you when you vote and are prepared to stand in line. And so for most counties, more and more polling places will continue to open up the closer that we move towards the election. And as of yesterday, more than 400,000 people have voted here in Indiana, and that is more than uh, people that voted at the same time in the 2016 election. Another thing I meant to tell you guys that they told us while we were voting is when you're checking those boxes, make sure you're actually filling in that full circle, not doing X's and not doing check marks. 
because it won't be able to read it. So make sure you fill in that bubble completely. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Kelsey, thank you. This morning, some important information for Hoosier voters. A federal appeals court has shut down an extension for those absentee ballots. A judge proposed extending the deadline 10 days because of slow mail delivery and the pandemic. Ballots would be accepted as long as they had that November 3rd postmark. Now listen up. Instead, ballots must arrive by noon on Election Day as originally planned. Common Cause Indiana says about 1,500 ballots in Marion County and 400 in Hamilton County were rejected back in the primary because they did not arrive by the noon deadline. So get those ballots in. Lauren, our Democracy 2020 coverage continues on this Wednesday with a look at the race for governor here in our state of Indiana. Today we talk with Donald Rainwater. Donald Rainwater, he is the Libertarian candidate for governor. We met on Monument Circle. He's for the elimination of the individual income tax and the personal property tax on your primary residence. Rainwater is raising concerns about the governor's executive orders during this pandemic. Would a governor Rainwater, would you have not had a stay, a stay at home order or a mass mandate or limited those gatherings? I would not have, no. Okay. I believe that uh, here again, to live in the type of society that the founders of both the United States and the state of Indiana intended, uh, we're supposed to be citizens, not subjects, which means that the government uh, should provide the information necessary, all the information, as much transparency as humanly possible, so that each citizen can decide for themselves how to keep themselves safe. More of my interview with Donald Rainwater tonight on the news at 6 here on WRTV. We've already highlighted and Democratic candidate Dr. Woody Myers and the incumbent Republican Governor Eric Holcomb. All unedited interviews are posted on our website, thewrtv.com, all part of our Democracy 2020 coverage. Rafael, let's take a turn now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic and the impact it's having here on our state. State health officials confirm 1,569 new coronavirus cases. Since the pandemic began, more than 138,000 Hoosiers have tested positive for COVID-19. Health officials also confirming 27 new coronavirus-related deaths. Since March, nearly 3,600 Hoosiers have died with the coronavirus. And when it comes to the overall cases by age here in Indiana, the highest percentage right now is among 20 to 29 year olds, 20.2 percent that is. And this morning, health officials say that looking at the ages of the people who are infected can help them predict new hotspots. IUPUI's Fairbanks School of Public Health has been working with the state to collect and data and analyze the spread of COVID-19. According to the researchers, 40 percent of people infected with COVID-19 had no signs or symptoms. Those who are asymptomatic are often young and otherwise healthy, and they may not be following social distancing guidelines. In these spikes, there's nothing magical about this. Uh, I mean, I could predict this, you know, in my sleep, if you will. When we get people together, you know, less than six feet apart, not wearing face masks um, and spending prolonged periods of time together, we're going to see cases. It, I mean, this is still an active pandemic. Well, hotspot counties are defined as those with more than 100 cases in the previous seven days. They also had increases in the cases in the preceding three to seven days. Lauren, a southern Indiana man convicted of killing his ex-girlfriend will now spend life in prison without parole. A Clark County judge handed down the sentence to Joseph Oberhansley on Tuesday. Oberhansley was convicted last month in the 2014 death of Tammy Jo Blanton. Authorities say the woman's body was found badly mutilated in her home. Prosecutors dropped an attempt to seek the death penalty last year. Now let me take you to Hamilton County. A surprising find beneath the water of Geist Reservoir in Fishers. Fishers police say a local fisherman recently notified officers of a possible vehicle in Geist Reservoir by the Fall Creek Bridge. On Monday, the Fishers Police dive team, they found a 1987 Chevy Camaro that was reported stolen back in July of 1988. The Camaro had been under the water undetected for 32 years. Police say the owner is now deceased and was never able to find out what happened 
to their vehicle. Wow. Well, this morning, another Indianapolis neighborhood is losing its local grocery store. Kroger says it's closing its location in Broad Ripple within the next 30 days. That company says the store has not made a profit there in several years. The closure will mark the end of an era. That Broad Ripple Kroger opened back in 1954. So it's going to be a big loss to this community. Uh, I know the Kroger seem to be building these big super stores now. And there are a couple not too far from here, but this is going to be a big loss to the community. Uh, it's disappointing they're going to close the store. I mean, it's a nice neighborhood market for me. I can just walk and like get my groceries and like things like that. Um, this Kroger's been here for like a really long time, so it's sad to see it go. Well, Kroger says nearly 40 associates work at the Broad Ripple store here, and they'll be offered positions at other locations around Indianapolis. The pandemic impact impacting the finances for thousands of Hoosier families. Coming up, The Rebound Indiana is looking at a simple steps to keep your money in check. But first, on this Wednesday, let's check on your forecast with our very own Todd Clausen. Good morning, TK. Hey, Raphael, good morning to you. The winds of change will be blowing here across central Indiana. Today turns into a real windy day, but the wind is out of the south as high pressure is firmly in control. But the winds, they'll switch northwesterly during the day tomorrow, and that's going to bring in much cooler weather, not only for your Thursday, but into your weekend as well. We'll highlight it all coming up in your WRTV Storm Team forecast when Good Morning Indiana continues right here on WRTV. The Rebound Indiana, our commitment here at WRTV to bring you advice from experts to help you and your family make it through this economic crisis. Lauren? That, that's right. So we spoke to Kenya Van Osten Proman with Bank of America here locally, and she has five simple tips for your family finances during these uncertain times. So we really want to make sure that Hoosiers know that in these uh, time, unprecedented times that it's really important uh, to have an emergency fund uh, as well as tracking your spending and monitoring things that perhaps no longer have a relevance such as subscriptions to a magazine that may not be relevant at this time and just really paying particular attention to what's coming in and out of the account. So think about it as putting a little something every week. It doesn't have to be a, you know, a large amount every week. What's important is that you are sticking to the savings plan so you want to make sure that the amount that you are allocating to save weekly is going to be enough to maintain your uh, finances throughout the week don't hesitate to reach out to your financial institution i think you know when you think about uh, an emergency, most people don't think about their financial institution, but when it comes to really ensuring that you're maintaining and being a good steward over your uh, finances, reaching out to your financial institution is probably the first place to call. So we really want to make sure that customers are leveraging um, all of the digital means that are now being provided by um, financial institutions. And then let's not forget the free resources that are out there. Uh, websites and materials such as Better Money Habits uh, are phenomenal resources to really ensure that you and your family are staying on track. And for another look at those tips and some resources, you can just go to this article on our website, wrtv.com slash rebound. So Lauren, great interview and great editing on that story. I love that. We're learning about a free program this morning for Marion County residents impacted by COVID-19, preparing for careers in high demand industries. The group Washington Township Adult Education offering courses to provide training on a wide range of positions. Now, people don't have to have a high school diploma, can take the high school equivalency test for free. Adult basic education classes are also offered for free to help prepare for the next test. To enroll or learn more about this program, go to the IndyAdultEd.com.
www.thepeopleshow.com. Great program. Take advantage of that. And today, take advantage of what will be another nice day here in central Indiana, Todd Clausen. Yeah, it's going to be a warm day. In fact, today is going to be the warmest day, Raphael, that we'll see probably in at least the next seven uh, to ten days here across central Indiana as the winds will be changing and bringing in some cooler air as we get into the day tomorrow. So let me break down uh, the headlines here, which is uh, the wind. And I broke it down into time parts for you throughout the day uh, with wind speeds. This morning, the wind is fairly calm. It's not really too much of an issue for us. But as the cold front starts to approach this afternoon, the winds will kick up 15 to about 25 miles per hour. But it's really this evening and then into the overnight hours that the wind speeds will be the highest 30 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. So you still have some patio furniture outside on your uh, patios. You may want to tie that down, bring it into the garage or some garbage bins uh, as those winds will become pretty gusty here uh, later on today. This morning, as I mentioned, the winds are calm. It's a partly cloudy sky for us as we kick off our Wednesday there as you look from downtown uh, off towards the east. Temperatures this morning now in the 40s everywhere you go. 43 in Greenfield, 41 in Thorntown, 44 is the current temperature in Muncie. We stay in the 40s here this morning, but as soon as the sun comes up, sunrise a little before 8 o'clock, notice how quickly the temperatures will climb. 66 degrees already by this afternoon and then easily into the mid-70s for your afternoon highs. And there's those high thin clouds that are already sneaking in here. The rain still off to our west. This rain will get in here during the day tomorrow. So high temperatures today, well above normal. You'll have to contend with that wind picking up, but it's still a very nice day for us. Uh, temperature wise, 80 in Petersburg, 78 Frankfurt, as well as Muncie, Shelbyville at 79 degrees, Connorsville 77, about 78 today in Martinsville, and then highs in the upper 70s from Bloomington to Columbus uh, down towards Seymour. And normally I show you the evening planner here, but I pushed it forward a little bit for you here to the overnight hours, and here's why. Our high High temperature tomorrow is going to occur shortly after midnight. It's a southerly wind today. That's what's bringing the temperatures all the way up into the near 80 degree range. But look what happens overnight. The temperatures really start to drop off from about 65 degrees as you get into uh, the one o'clock hour. And then by the time you wake up, we're already down into the 50s. And then temperatures just continue to slowly fall throughout the day tomorrow. So our highs right after midnight. It's going to be a chilly day tomorrow, not only because the temperatures are obviously falling, but we'll have clouds and then we'll bring some rain into the forecast as well. As the front goes through, this front slides through during the afternoon hours. So it'll be kind of a chilly windswept rain. And that front does not go through as quick as the one we dealt with on Monday when it was that quick burst of rain. These showers could linger a little bit, but we'll take whatever rain we can get. Look at those temperatures for Friday and Saturday morning all the way down into the 34 degree range in the city. Could be below freezing a couple of those mornings in the outlying areas, so it's our first big shot of very cold air. And then on Saturday, 60 degrees, you're high with plenty of sunshine. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you. Traffic is picking up right here on the southwest side of town. This is a view of I-465 near Man Road, where you can see everything is still traveling up to speed. No major issues to report around the metro area this Wednesday morning. Raphael? Let's take you to Hamilton County this morning where Carmel firefighters will have a new home around this time next year. On Tuesday, the city broke ground on a new fire department headquarters. That building will also include a museum, administrative offices, and community event spaces. It's on Veterans Way, which is near Range Line Road, and Main Street, the site of the first Carmel Fire Station, by the way. The new facility is expected to be completed by next fall. It's all part of Clay Township's $60 million park and public safety project impacts. A big good morning on this Wednesday to Knightstown, Trafalgar, and Zinesville, all great places to call home. As we take a live look outside, we love our hometown as well. Take a look. As our city is coming alive this morning, sunrise will come up here shortly. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on WRTV. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. The time right now is 624 on our Wednesday. Raphael, it's time to talk about what is trending at 6. So, Lauren, I would normally tell you that if a stranger came to your door later today and either knocked on the door or rang the doorbell, I would tell you, don't answer. But right. sometimes you have to take a risk and just peek out the window just to see what's going on. So let me take you to California for the special ringing of the door. You won the Nobel Prize. And so they're trying to reach you, but they cannot. They don't seem to have a number for you. We gave them your cell phone number.
More of the ringing of the bell, that's Stanford professor Bob Wilson telling his neighbor and fellow professor Paul Milgram of his big news via the doorbell camera. The Nobel Committee in Stockholm couldn't get in touch with Milgram at 2 a.m. Pacific Time Monday to share the big news. The Stanford professors received the prize for their work in economics. They should also be considered to get a prize for most creative use of a home security camera as well. So sometimes <laughs> it's okay to come to the door. Yeah, Just sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Raphael, a Texas teenager is part of a vanguard of girls breaking barriers. Cami Timmons is about to become one of the first American female Eagle Scouts. A 16-year-old okay, joined the Scouts Cammy. last year, yeah, just after they announced girls are allowed to join. She collected enough badges since then, did enough volunteer work, and shown enough leadership to join nearly 800 other girls across the country to be awarded Eagle Scout during a ceremony at the end of October. Congratulations to her. And it's always worth repeating that girls can do anything, right, Lauren? <laughs> That's right. Okay, and we continue our check of the fall foliage here in central Indiana. This picture is from Beth Foraker. Check out this view of a cabin in Brown County. I want to stay there for a week. Over the next few days, I'll share some photos sent to me on my Facebook page, but that's just another beautiful sight here in central Indiana. Check that out, Todd Clausen. A great place to vacation. Yeah, it is absolutely beautiful down there in Brown County and the leaves really changing all across central Indiana. I took a, a bike ride through Garfield Park uh, yesterday afternoon. It was beautiful there as well, just south of downtown Indianapolis. Outside right now, we are dealing with quiet conditions. Wind, not much of an issue right now. Things will change, though, as we work our way throughout the course of uh, the day today as it does become very windy, but it's a southerly wind, and that takes our temperatures all the way up into the mid to upper 70s across the area, putting us almost 15 degrees above normal for the day today. The wind will be very gusty tonight into tomorrow, but the wind direction will change tomorrow, and that is going to take our temperatures drastically cooler, not only for tomorrow, but in the coming days as well. So take advantage of the warmth here throughout the day today. Tomorrow's high occurs shortly after midnight. Much of the daytime hours will be in the 50s tomorrow with rain showers, and then as temperatures slowly rebound for the weekend, we still though stay below that temperature for your average high of 66 degrees. Lauren. All right. Todd, well, if you're looking for a holiday gift to take someone's mind off all the problems we have on Earth this year, you can now buy a piece of another planet. Working for you, our John Matarese tells us if this is real or another scam so you don't waste your money. With the pandemic stretching across the globe and no major country unaffected, wouldn't it be nice if you could buy a place on another planet? Well, maybe you can. Mel Winter was looking for deals on Groupon the other day when she came upon this. I saw it was by an acre from Mars, and I thought, how, how does that work? It was a half-price deal on one acre of land on Mars. The planet, not the candy bar. No, it won't cost you a million dollars, just $15. And Melody would even get an ownership deed. At first I thought, would my acre uh, appreciate and mm -hmm. I thought well if they land on the Mars would they put a, a building on my land and then I thought wait a minute who owns Mars now if this sounds vaguely familiar it might be because you remember radio commercials from a few years back saying you could buy a star up in the heavens and have that star named after you or a family member Astronomer Dean Regis told me at the time the International Astronomical Union is the only group that can name anything in outer space. This does not meet their requirements. But with a pandemic, protests, and anger across the globe these days, he thinks Mars might not be so bad. Going to Mars is one of those things that could do that too, is that it could bring people together and say, you know, this is something that uh, humans have been striving to do and we can do it. As for whether this offer is real, the fine print says it all. It's a novelty gift for entertainment purposes only. So it's not a scam. You'll get a certificate with your name on it. Just don't try to move to your new plot of land so you don't waste your money. I'm John Madrys. Good morning, Indiana. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Now on Good Morning Indiana, on this Wednesday morning, here is your 630 News Feed. New details on a solar project in Shelby County. Many homeowners are voicing their concerns of placing solar panels on prime farmland in Bengal and Shelbyville. 
Utah-based S-Power says the earliest it may present details of its plan to Shelby County Commissioners is next summer. The company also says it would not begin construction on any of its projects until 2022. The president of the University of Notre Dame has now ended his quarantine. Reverend John Jenkins tested positive for COVID-19 after attending Judge Amy Coney Barrett's Supreme Court nomination ceremony last month. Jenkins has since apologized for not wearing a face mask or maintaining social distancing. He faced some criticism from Notre Dame students for the behavior that ran counter to the rules that students have to follow there to prevent the spread of the virus. So a dino named Sue coming to Indianapolis. The Children's Museum of Indianapolis will be welcoming the world famous Sue the T-Rex next year during its T-Rex celebration. The Field Museum in Chicago is sending a cast of Sue to Indianapolis. Sue is one of the largest, most complete and best preserved T-Rexes in the world. Coming along with Sue, will be a teenage T-Rex named Bucky, whose skeleton was discovered in 1998. I would love to go back to 1998, Lauren and Todd, <laughs> considering 2020, but on this day, <laughs> we'll just have to enjoy October the 14th, 2020. We have no choice. Yeah, that's right. We're stuck here in 2020, Raphael and Todd. We have a windy day ahead, but it's been pretty warm, so really we can't complain too much in the temperature department. Yeah, you know, and that's the trade-off that a lot of times you have to deal with this time of year, Lauren, is temperatures stay close to 80 degrees, but the wind will really start to pick up as the day goes on. So it's not a perfect day for us uh, by any means weather-wise, uh, but definitely not a bad day given, as Raphael mentioned, it's October the 14th, 49 right now in Indy, 43 three in Lafayette. Winds are calm uh, this morning. That changes in a big time way as the day goes on. The windiest part of the day today will be during the evening hours when we could see some gusts up to 30 to 40 miles per hour. Some high thin clouds out there this morning and we'll deal with partly cloudy skies throughout the day today. Yesterday there wasn't a cloud in the sky. Well today there's a little more in the way of cloud cover but we'll just call it partly cloudy. Here's the cold front up to our north that arrives uh, during the day tomorrow and that's when rain showers return. So partly cloudy for all day parts here throughout the day today. 66 degrees already by the noon hour. Temperatures in the mid 70s for your afternoon high. But again, watch for that wind to pick up. We'll talk more about this wind and the wind direction in detail and the changes that brings for tomorrow coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's take a look right now at traffic as you're heading out on the roads this morning. Taking you in here to downtown Indianapolis. This is I-65 and I-70 at the North Split where things are really picking up this morning. You can see that by all the headlights moving across your screen. Everything's traveling up to speed. No crashes or issues here to slow down your commute. Staying here in Indianapolis has been a violent year here, and as the city has already reached a homicide record, and we still have several weeks still to go in the year 2020. Uh, so, Lord, let's look at the numbers. Metro Police investigating seven homicides from just this weekend alone. IMPD reports 187 total homicides, with 160 of them being intentional homicides. On Tuesday, Mayor Joe Hogg said the Metro Police Chief and other city leaders addressed this urgent problem. We asked what new ideas the city may have to stop the violence. The ideas themselves may not be brand new, but we're doubling down. We will continue to add more uh, IMPD uh, officers uh, in 2021. Uh, we will continue to expand our community-based, beat-oriented policing. Mayor Hawk said specifically mentioned giving more funding to group violence intervention. The goal is to help stop violence before it begins. Now, this program has been hampered, of course, because of the pandemic that's been hitting the entire world. But the mayor says next year the city will increase funding for the group by more than $100,000. The site of that news conference was Rising Star Apartments. That's on the northeast side of Indianapolis. It's a place where city and community groups are working together to fight the violence. The group Community Action of Greater Indianapolis recently received a $75,000 crime prevention grant from the city. They used part of that money to open a permanent office in that apartment complex. In that grant, we have Mothers Against Violence, who is a group that provides um, assistance to families who are unfortunately lost loved ones to gun violence. 
Um, they have grief counseling. They are wraparound, and they're wonderful mothers themselves, and so they understand that pain. We have another partner involved in this, uh, Growing Indy, that provides um, cognitive-based um, behavioral therapy to start changing mindsets because if we're doing all this work and we're not touching mindsets in their families, it doesn't mean much. And we have more details this morning. The city also increased funding for the gun violence interruption program that aims to identify those most at risk of gun violence. Lauren? So, Raphael, Metro Police are asking for your help in a hit-and-run investigation that critically injured a cyclist. Police say that an SUV hit a person riding a bicycle along Sherman Drive and Pleasant Run Parkway on the city's east side just after 9 o'clock Thursday morning. Investigators released surveillance pictures of the SUV. It's described as a gold or tan late 1990s to early 2000s model Chevy Tahoe or GMC Yukon. Police say the vehicle has some unique features to look out for as well. The wheels are aftermarket. The side mirrors are oversized and the hood has this raised area in the center. The Supreme Court confirmation hearing continues today for Amy Coney Barrett. Members of the Senate Judiciary Committee will each have 20 minutes apiece to ask more questions of the judge and the Notre Dame professor. On Tuesday, Democratic senators asked the judge whether she would recuse herself from any disputes stemming from the presidential election this year. President Trump nominated Barrett just over a month before Election Day, and the president has said in Twitter that he is counting on the Supreme Court, in his words, to look at the ballots. I would consider it, let's see, I certainly hope that all members of the committee have more confidence in my integrity than to think that I would allow myself to be used as a pawn to decide this election. A reminder that you can watch WRTV's live coverage of the confirmation hearing today at WRTV.com or on your favorite streaming device such as Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, and Apple TV. Well, some of the busiest places in Indiana in the past week have been the polls. Next, we'll take a live report and look at the latest numbers on a brisk rate of early voting so far. And Lauren, regardless of when you cast your vote, you, you want to make sure that the vote is counted. Uh, coming up, the group working for you to make sure your voice is heard. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on WRTV. Democracy 2020 now. Early voting has been happening in our state for a week now. And Lauren, we have seen many long lines across central Indiana. Yeah, and our own Kelsey Anderson is joining us live this morning with what election officials out in Hancock County have seen so far. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning. So first of all, I found my sticker. It was in the depths of my car in between the seat crack, you know, where everything goes. But that makes me one of millions of Americans who have already voted in this year's election. And 400,000 people here in Indiana have already cast their vote for the, this election this year, which is more than we've seen in the 2016 election in this same time frame. So many Hoosiers across the state dealt with long lines and some people reporting poll workers not wearing masks, but overall, County clerks are reporting it's been a successful first week of voting. Hancock County Clerk Lisa Lofgreen tells me they've had about 2% of registered Hancock County voters come out so far. Um, we've had steady lines all of last week. We voted, our number at the end of Friday was 1776, which I love that number for, <laughs> for voting. That's our independence. So um, that was in person. We've processed approximately 6,800 mail applications and we've received about right around 4,000, just less than 4,000 back so far. So you want to make sure you have your mask and your photo ID with you and are prepared to stand in line. And for most counties, more and more polling places will continue to open up the closer we move towards the election. For example, here in Hancock County, they've got several more locations opening up across the county on Monday. So I early voted, like I said, here in Hancock County earlier this week. The whole process took me about 40 minutes. I got in line at 8 o'clock. Um, there was social distancing. Poll workers were sanitizing things. So overall, very safe and uh, quick process. So, Kelsey, now that you found your I Voted sticker, you said you found it at the bottom of your car. I have mine here in my living room because I voted last week. Take that sticker, Kelsey. Come on. Put it on the jacket. Wear it with pride that you voted. And See all, if I can find it. I might have lost it again. <laughs> 
Here we go. Well, that's good. Here in Johnson County, it took about 20 minutes to vote. So vote, vote, Indiana. It's important. As we've shown you, the, the pace of early voting across the state has been brisk, and state election officials say that's been the case all across our state. Here are the latest numbers from the Indiana Secretary of State's office. As of yesterday, almost 266,000 Hoosiers have already returned their absentee ballots. Another 144,000 have voted early in person. That means the number of votes cast already is equal to about 15% of the votes cast in the 2016 presidential race here in the Hoosier State. Lauren? And we are now, Raphael, 20 days away from the November election, and several organizations are working together on an effort to make sure that your vote counts. So right now, the group Protect the Vote is recruiting thousands of volunteers all across the country. They'll be on hand at polling sites to answer any questions you may have. They even provide attorneys if a voter runs into trouble casting a ballot. Those volunteers are not poll watchers. Those people are usually affiliated with a particular candidate. Instead, these volunteers are called poll monitors and they're nonpartisan. It is even more incumbent on us, particularly wearing our nonpartisan hat, to make sure that the election runs smoothly because we know that folks are going to be looking carefully. It's about making sure that every voter gets their ballot counted and their voice heard in our democracy. And that's really something we can all come together on. So if you have a problem at the polls, Protect the Vote has set up a nationwide hotline staffed by attorneys with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. The numbers for different languages are on your screen right now. If you'd like to volunteer as a poll monitor, just go to protectthevote.net. And here are some key dates just ahead of Election Day. If you do want to vote by mail, you must request your ballot by October 22nd. You are encouraged to do so as soon as possible, though. A federal appeals court has sided with the state of Indiana on the deadline where they need to receive your absentee ballot. That means election officials must receive your ballot by noon on Election Day. You can find everything you need to know about voting here across central Indiana at the Vote in 2020 digital section of our website, WRTV.com. If Chicago is your kind of town, you might be out of luck for a while. Next, the reason the Windy City is saying you have to stay put if you decide to take a trip there. Speaking of the Windy City, the winds of change coming to central Indiana, and Todd Clausen is standing by with all the details. Good morning, TK. Yeah, and as those winds pick up day today, Raphael, there's an increased fire threat here across central Indiana with the dry conditions that we have out there and the low humidity fires can spread quickly. National Weather Service has put out a special statement about this, so please refrain from burning here throughout the day today, but it's going to be a mild one as temperatures climb close to 80 degrees. Raphael mentioned the winds of change, though. Those blow in here later on tonight. More on that coming up in your Storm Team forecast right here on WRTV. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Researchers are putting the brakes on another clinical trial for a potential coronavirus treatment. Eli Lilly and company announcing on Tuesday that it's pausing its ongoing trial for safety reasons. In a statement, Eli Lilly says the move was recommended by independent monitors. The announcement comes just one day after Johnson & Johnson paused its phase three vaccine trials. Lilly is testing an antibody treatment similar to the one made by Regeneron that was given to President Trump. Advanced trials of two other potential vaccines made by Moderna and Pfizer are still taking place. Lauren? And Raphael, COVID-19 cases are on the rise in Indiana, and that means your trip to a popular destination across the state line could get a little more complicated. The Chicago Department of Public Health has added Indiana to its mandatory quarantine list. That means if you're visiting or returning from to Chicago, from Indiana, that is, you must quarantine for 14 days after you get there. The emergency travel order now applies to 25 states and Puerto Rico. If you violate the order, you could face fines up to $500 per day with a maximum fine of $7,000. That order goes into effect on Friday. Well, let's take a look back here at our forecast at home on this Wednesday. Todd, we know we have some changes on the way, but what can we expect this morning? You know, this morning it's nice and quiet, Lauren. Temperatures pretty seasonable for this time of year. 39, a little bit cool in Columbus for uh, the middle of October. 443 in Lafayette, 44 in Tipton, and 49 is the current temperature in Indianapolis. The wind, not much of an issue as of right now. That is the big 
big change in this forecast though uh, going forward uh, as we work our way into the afternoon and evening hours. As far as the skies, basically partly cloudy from start to finish. No threat of any rain in the forecast today, but notice how quickly we climb out of the 40s by 9 a.m. once the sun comes up through the 50s during the 10 o'clock hour and then easily into the mid 60s by the noon hour. High temperatures today into the mid to upper 70s across the area. Full 10 to about 15 degrees above normal. The trade off though again is a gusty wind that is going to be picking up throughout the day. Here's some cloud cover that's uh, scooting into the area right now. We'll call it partly cloudy. This rain that stays off to our northwest here throughout uh, the day today. So I want to walk you through today and tomorrow uh, on our wind gust forecast and I want you to pay attention and not only to the numbers which is obviously the wind speed but the arrows as well which is the wind direction and here's the time stamp in the top right hand portion of your screen. Winds will be out of the south today. That's what's going to bring the warmth in and you notice by time we get to 130 there we're looking at 10 to 15 maybe 20 mile per hour wind gust but then as we continue into the afternoon and into the evening hours the highest wind speeds will be later on tonight as they could be as high as about 40 miles per hour in spots so it becomes very very windy but it's still a southerly wind and that continues to uh, give us uh, some warmth as we progress into Thursday this is 1 30 in the morning you notice the wind starting to change a little bit still very gusty and then by time we get to Thursday 10 a.m. the front is working its way through the area no longer do we have those warm southerly winds instead we have the chilly northwesterly winds they'll continue to diminish throughout the day tomorrow but because they're out of the northwest our temperatures will fall throughout the entire day on Thursday so tomorrow's high will be right after midnight by the time you wake up tomorrow morning six o'clock 59 degrees mid 50s by the time you get to the mid afternoon with some scattered showers working their way through the area as this cold front passes again we're not looking at a lot in the way of rain but with the wind and with the falling temperatures and then the rain falling it won't be the most pleasant afternoon hours tomorrow as these showers move through could see a little over a tenth of an inch of rain across uh, the area once that front is through very very chilly on Friday starting off near freezing going up to 57 in the afternoon then low 60s with dry conditions for the weekend Lauren all right Todd thank you so much we do have a traffic alert for drivers up in the Lebanon area we just got word of a crash here with injuries that's closing Indianapolis Avenue at State Road 32 you want to avoid that spot a little bit longer cleanup shouldn't take too long so this is something we'll continue to monitor but just want to plan ahead if you're traveling through the Lebanon area or parts of Boone County today it is 652 stick around we'll be right back after this short break Welcome back. It is 655 on Good Morning Indiana. Raphael, let's take a look at some of the top stories here as we kick off your Wednesday. Uh, so, Lauren, a federal appeals court says that Indiana's current deadline for absentee ballots cannot be extended. That means if you are voting by mail, your absentee ballot must arrive no later than noon on Election Day, November the 3rd, for that ballot to be counted. Well, COVID-19 cases remain high in Indiana. The state health department reporting 1,569 new cases on Tuesday. That's the fifth consecutive day the state reported more than 1,500 new cases. The state also reports 27 more Hoosiers have died with COVID-19. Another Indianapolis neighborhood losing its grocery store. Kroger says it's closing the location in Broad Ripple within the next 30 days. The company says the store has not made a profit in several years. The Broad Ripple Kroger opened back in 1954. And check out this surprising find beneath the waters of Geist Reservoir in Fishers. On Monday, the Fishers Police Dive Team found this 1987 Chevy Camaro reported stolen back in July of 1988. The Camaro had been under the water undetected for 32 years. Police say the owner is deceased and was never able to find out what happened to that stolen car. Wow. Pretty incredible video and pictures there. All right, as we're heading out the door for our Wednesday, Todd, what do folks here need to know? You know, it's quiet right now and temperatures are fairly comfortable and today is going to be a warm day. That's the good news in this forecast as we'll climb all the way into the mid to upper 70s with partly cloudy skies. What you don't see on there, this graphic is the wind speed and that is going to pick up. It becomes a very windy day for us across the area as we'll 
eventually see some wind gusts by this evening in that 30 to 40 mile per hour range. So be aware of that. As we go into tomorrow, our high temperature is going to be right after midnight, and that's probably still in the upper 60s. I put 61 there on Thursday. That's kind of an average. We'll fall into the 50s as the day goes on with some scattered showers working through. And then for Friday and Saturday, lots of sunshine. But look at the low temperatures Friday and Saturday morning, all the way down to near freezing and with highs in the 50s on Friday and on Saturday, Lauren, looking at a high right around 60 degrees. All right, Todd, thank you. And we are back here in 25 minutes and all throughout good morning. America with your local news, weather, and of course your traffic updates. We hope you have a great Wednesday. Thanks for joining us.